Mulling an appeal, what the Biden administration says it is waiting for as the nation debates whether masks should be required on public transportation. Plus, the new opportunities aimed at getting medical personnel into rural Iowa centers. And we're in for a wet Wednesday. How long you'll need to keep that umbrella handy in your storm teammate forecast. Plus, changes in Iowa schools, the plea from some Des Moines elementary students, and the new schedule for AIM students of all ages. KCCI 8 News this morning starts right now. Find that raincoat. It is 5 o'clock as we start this Wednesday morning, and you're going to need it for most of the day. Absolutely. So, Jason, it sounds like before you step out the door, you're going to have that rain gear on you. Yeah, you're going to have to. I mean, it's not raining just yet, but we've got the clouds. And as you can see behind me, that once that rain gets here, we're going to have it for much of the day here. So make sure you at least throw it in your car before you head to work. Uh, temperatures staying pretty mild, though. I know we were, were about... 20 degrees, 25 degrees warmer than we were this time yesterday. And those temperatures back up into the low 50s. So your weather headlines, a rainy one today. We will be warming up, though. That warmth, though, is going to help bring in some chances for storms and even the potential for some stronger storms later on this week. I'll break down when coming up here shortly. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Jason. More pandemic restrictions are lifting, but medical experts are still urging caution. Hospitals around the country have been dealing with a growing amount of burnout from more than two years of the pandemic. And that has led to shortages in nearly every department in the hospital. Rural hospitals have especially felt the pinch of the pandemic, where they have fewer staff and each person who leaves leaves a huge hole to fill. Yeah, so some rural hospitals in Iowa have shut down departments because there's not enough staff. Yeah, so they need more workers. New this morning, KCCI's Nicole Tam found a new program to help fill those holes in staffing. Eric and Tizia, good morning. Many hospitals and long-term care facilities are offering sign-on bonuses as much as $25,000. The need is great because with fewer people working, that means longer wait times for people who want to see a doctor in those rural areas. Southwestern Community College has a three-year nursing program, and they hope to help with recruitment, too. They're starting a new partnership with the University of Iowa, so students that graduate from their program can take classes online for another year and get a full bachelor's degree. The advantage is that nurses can work full time in the community while working towards a higher degree. Department Chair Maureen Weaver is hopeful about the program because right now 90% of their school's nursing graduates end up working in the area's facilities. Nursing schools are struggling to find nursing instructors uh, because again they're getting um, the sign on bonuses. Um, the travel nurses are making thousands of dollars a week. Um, so it's hitting all aspects. Another hurdle for patients is finding transportation because some appointments are only available in the city. People have to travel further and pay more for that ride. Eric? All right, Nicole, well, also in the healthcare industry, one of the central Iowa's largest medical providers is being sold. Yeah, so Mercy One just announced that Michigan-based Trinity Health will acquire all of its facilities and assets in Iowa. So Mercy One's leaders say Trinity Health plans to streamline services so patients get more consistent and more efficient care. We are trying to find more people to work in healthcare in this state, in this organization, across the country. So, uh, you know, well, there may be minimal changes down the road, but boy, right now, it's really about the opportunity to be a stronger one. So Mercy One has 16 medical centers, 27 affiliates, and more than 420 care sites across Iowa. Trinity Health is already serving 25 states, and this merger makes Iowa its second largest region. Right now at 503, the Biden administration is still waiting to hear from the CDC if it should fight to reinstate the federal mask mandate for airlines and public transit. Federal health officials are assessing the threat from Omicron subvariant BA2. Lyft and Uber joined major airlines in dropping mask requirements yesterday. A lot of passengers celebrated the end of the mandate, but others are staying cautious and will continue to wear masks. Health experts say everyone should take their surroundings into account. Hey, just because you can doesn't mean you should. I'm not saying at all that you shouldn't worry about it. Again, I think that for many people who may be at higher risk, uh, older age, immunocompromised conditions uh, that are still very vulnerable to infection. Uh, here in Des Moines, passengers are split on wearing masks. Yeah, so they are no longer required at the airport or on DART buses as well. Yeah, we caught up with local passengers to see how they are reacting to the news that masks are optional. Some were excited, but others say they hope the public remembers COVID-19 is still a major threat. We flew out on Wednesday night and we got the news last night that we don't have to wear masks today and we were like, woo woo! It's the people's choice to, to, you know, if they want to make a decision in life, but at the same time, you got guidelines, you know, we, gotta, we also got to save lives and try to do the right thing in this world. 
So one passenger told us her family is choosing to wear masks since their youngest is not eligible for the vaccine and wants to protect her vulnerable family members. Uh, new this morning, we're getting an updated look now at Iowa COVID-19 numbers. The latest data from the state health department shows more than 1300 positive tests were reported over the last seven days. That's a 34% increase from last week when 980 positive tests were recorded. An additional 35 deaths have been added, bringing the total number of deaths to more than 9,500. However, hospitalizations, they've slightly decreased. 63 Iowans are currently hospitalized with COVID-19. Two patients are in ICUs battling the virus. Well, your time now is 505 and happening today, a CDC panel is set to discuss a second Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 booster shot. The CDC has already advised older and immunocompromised people to get a second shot. Vaccine makers say another shot for all adults could be helpful to ward off serious illness. An FDA advisory panel debated this same issue two weeks ago, but hasn't made a recommendation. Booster uptake in the U.S. has been slow since the shots were first authorized last September. Roughly half of people who are eligible for the first booster have gotten it. Well, as COVID-19 assistance programs wind down, housing advocates worry about the impact that will have on Iowans. Since the start of 2022, Iowa Legal Aid says there have been more than 5,300 evictions across our state. The Legal Aid team believes that there will be more than 20,000 eviction filings this year. That would be a record in Iowa. Evictions slowed down in 2020 because of the COVID-related rental assistance programs. Now experts worry with less assistance programs around, more people will suffer. People have really hard decisions to make with very limited budgets. Um, a lot of people are are spending far more than what we consider is this, the gold standard, which is 30% of their income on housing. Iowa Legal Aid ended up opening eviction help desks at courthouses in these six Iowa counties. Polk County has one of those help desks, and we have more information about it on our website at kcci.com. Make sure you download the KCCI app that's free to stay on top of all the latest COVID-19 headlines, including potential legal changes and additional booster shot guidelines. Well, next year, Ames students will have a much different routine as they get ready for school. Elementary students will now start at 740, high school at 830, and middle school at 840. The school board approved the change to the schedule for all grade levels last night, and the district says it made the decision after hearing feedback from parents. According to a survey of 1,700 parents, 49% of parents supported a new schedule compared to 50% who didn't. Financially speaking, the change could save the district $338,000 a year. And the Johnson School District also wants to start its times differently as well. So this is all to combat the statewide bus driver shortage. So the board is holding two public meetings with the next coming tomorrow where parents can tell the school board what they think about the plan here. And the Waukee and Marshalltown schools say they're also feeling the effects of the bus driver shortage. Now some students from Jackson Elementary in Des Moines are spearheading an effort to rename their own school. They say President Andrew Jackson should not be honored because of his record on race. That includes the Indian Removal Act from 1830 when President Jackson forced Native Americans to move out of their homes. The student leadership group at Jackson Elementary pitched an alternative name to the board last night, keeping the name but changing who the school is named after. Mary Jackson's perseverance, collaboration, and fight for equality aligns with the principles of Jackson Elementary. Our school's name should reflect the mission and character of our students within. Now, Mary Jackson, as she said, was the first black woman to work as an engineer for NASA. The NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. is also named after Mary Jackson. Right now in Arizona, several wildfires are burning throughout the state. Emergency has been declared as strong winds fuel the flames. Hundreds of families and animals have been evacuated as the out of control fire has scorched nearly 6,000 acres. At least two dozen buildings have been destroyed since the fire started Sunday morning. State officials say the blaze there is 0% contained. This morning at 509, we're waking up here in central Iowa to dry conditions for now, Jason, right? Yeah, yeah, and stress on for now. We're going to be having a pretty soggy day uh, for our Wednesday. And you look across the uh, next few days here, and we'll have multiple chances for not only rain, but the potential for showers and thunderstorms. So we're going to be warming up, though. 54 for your high today. We're up to 69 for your Thursday. And then come Friday, we've got a chance for some storms. Best chances for stronger storms will be westward out of the state as that temperature climbs into the middle 70s. But coming Saturday, we'll have another chance for another round of potentially strong to severe storms. So something we'll have to keep an eye on as we do get a little bit closer. But after that, temperatures starting to wind back down. We're down to 61 on Sunday.
mid to upper 50s Monday and Tuesday. Coming up, we'll have more of a track on the rain you can expect today and show you how much is on the way. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thank you, Jason. Right now, we do have our eyes I-80 uh, near Oakland Acres. So you can see there is a major backup right now. This has been going on for an hour now. If you're traveling westbound in I-80, it looks like there is a vehicle that is on fire. That's what the report that's coming in right now. So again, it's causing a major backup. I-80 near Oakland Acres already at 510 uh, on this uh, Wednesday morning. So we'll let you know when the roadway opens up. I will let you know uh, when you where you can take a detour in just a bit, but I would definitely avoid this area because you're going to get stuck for a while. Eric. Great advice to plan ahead. Well, a Southern Iowa dog breeder convicted of animal cruelty will serve his sentence on his own time. Daniel Gingrich ran what investigators call the largest puppy mill ever in Iowa. He now lives in Ohio and he's currently serving a 30 day sentence, but it's on an intermittent basis over a 120 day time frame. Last week, for example, he reported to jail for just three days. He's back in jail again now, closer to where he lives in Ohio, which was also agreed to in his plea agreement. The sheriff there tell case, tells KCCI Gingrich and the jail have a set schedule worked out for when he can serve his time. To see all of the KCCI investigates coverage on Gingrich and his former puppy mill, go to KCCI.com. It's now 11 minutes after 5 o'clock. Indianola is considering making some big changes to city buildings. The plans they have for first responders, City Hall, and the public library. Plus, let there be rock. The benefits blasting ACDC in the operating room can have during surgery. But first, the U.S. preparing to send more artillery to Ukraine. I'm Aixa Diaz in Washington with this critical moment in the Russian war. And with the exception of yesterday, the wind has been really whipping lately. It has really been strong the last week or so. Pair that with the cold temperatures we've been experiencing and it provided this cool shot from a few days ago. Sherry Toms was at Silver Lake last week when she noticed the winds coated the grass on the banks, covering them with ice, almost like icebergs sticking straight up. You won't be finding that anytime soon with our warmer weather coming, but still a great picture to catch in the middle of April. <laughs> Challenging out there this spring, this is Iowa. Welcome back. Your time is now 515 and we're waking up to a cloudy day, but a much warmer morning than we have had in quite some time. So you may not be bundling up as much, 
As you make your way out the door, we are expecting rain chances though. And I'll go over some details on that coming up. First though, let's take a look at your dog walking forecast. If you are headed out the door again by 9 a.m., expecting that chance for rain to be making its way on through. And we're going to continue to see that as we head out through your afternoon hours. Winds are going to be strong as well. Temperatures back to 50 as we head through the 5 p.m. time frame. Highs today are going to be fairly widespread in the upper 40s to mid 50s. So as you head out on the roads early here again, not expecting much rain builds in by 8 a.m. We're going to continue to see that strengthen throughout the morning hours coming up. We'll have a track on that rain and show you a couple days where we could even see stronger storms coming up. All right, Jason. Well, at 515 now, President Biden says the U.S. is sending more artillery to Ukraine, answering pleas from Ukrainian leaders. Yes, yeah, so the battle for the eastern Donbas region and for the future of Ukraine is now underway. KCCI's Aix Diaz is in our Washington bureau and Aix Russia is hoping to split the country into two. Eric Tisia, Russia is hoping to capture the Donbass region, but Ukrainians are vowing to fight and the U.S. is preparing to send more artillery tailored and designed for that fight. The White House says the U.S. will provide more ammunition and security assistance to Ukraine after President Biden met virtually with world leaders about the next phase of the Russian war. Will you be sending more artillery to Ukraine? Yes. The U.S. has already sent more than two and a half billion dollars in military aid to Ukraine. Just last week, the president approved an eight hundred million dollar package that includes helicopters and artillery systems. The Pentagon says U.S. forces will train Ukrainians on how to use some of that equipment. Artillery pieces are not all that radically different from one another, and we don't think it's going to take very long for them to, to, to go through the training on that. Ukrainians are defending the eastern part of their country while trying to evacuate civilians trapped in the war-torn port city of Mariupol. Ukrainian forces there refusing to surrender. The enemy's units are 10 times larger than ours. We appeal to the world leaders to help us. One of the challenges for the Pentagon right now is shipping the military equipment to Ukrainian forces quickly and safely. In Washington, I exit as KCCI News. Well, new this morning, a bill is now on the governor's desk that would provide mobile home tenants more notice before increasing rents or being evicted. It's passed yesterday in the Senate and it comes after years of tenants trying to get legal protections in Iowa. Advocates say the bill provides balance between tenants and landlords. However, tenants say it doesn't do enough. Landlords say it does too much. Some lawmakers say this is just a first step and they're going to continue working on the issue in future sessions. Well, new this morning, Indianola city leaders are proposing projects that would create a new public safety facility and combine the city hall and library. The projects are estimated to cost about $46 million. They want to build a new combined city hall and public but library as well in a new public safety building for both the police and fire departments. The interim city manager says this new building is a must have. And right now, people at City Hall are working outside of the building. So City Council is considering the next steps here. If approved, a special election would be held September 13th. A new type of blood test could become the next frontier in cancer screening. It's known as a liquid biopsy designed to detect dozens of cancers before there are signs of disease. The tests work by checking for DNA fragments from tumor cells. Government researchers are planning a large experiment with as many as 200,000 participants to see whether the blood tests can save lives. And if we can find these cancers at earlier stages before people have symptoms, they're, they're offered many more options for effective treatment and they're often curable. Uh, some concerns include false positives and unnecessary costs. The White House has announced a goal of cutting the cancer death rate in the half over the next 25 years. A new medical study shows rocking out in the operating room actually improves surgical performance. So this is quite interesting. It shows one specific band is bringing higher success rates. So a study by Germany's Heidelberg University says blasting hits by ACDC significantly improved operations performed by surgeons in both accuracy and speed to tasks performed. And now one doctor at uh, Ohio State says music helps him during surgery. I think there is a very therapeutic uh, nature to music uh, for not only the uh, caregivers, the patients. When you're listening to music, you're almost kind of in a zone. Yeah, so next time you're headed in for a surgery, you should consider urging your surgeon to crank up the tubes. A little thunderstruck in the operating room. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd be shook all night long. I was just going <laughs> to say, you shook me all night long. Come on, we can't lose you. <laughs> shook me all night long. This is what I deal with every morning, guys. <laughs>
don't need to do other casts. Can we just keep <laughs> back in black? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh boy, I'm walking off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we look outside right now. We've got uh, just a little bit of cloud cover out there. 48's where we sit. Uh, we still have a breeze southeast 16 miles an hour. So I know we've had the wind off and on for seemingly ever, but today is going to be another one of those days where that breeze is going to get you. Overcast skies through central portions of the state. You can see a few showers up off to the southwest there. Those are going to continue to build in as we head through the remainder of the morning hours. And eventually we're going to be uh, seeing that rain coat its way across the state here. And again, bring in some much needed rainfall. Temperatures right now, though, warmer to the southwest. 50 for Council Bluffs, 48 for Creston. Low 40s up off to the northeast. So we are quite a bit warmer than we were this time yesterday. And we've got a south-southeast breeze to, help, to thank for that help. 20 mile an hour sustained winds for Creston. 16 in Ames, Waterloo at 17. So you're going to notice that wind as you step out. And temperatures as we head through the remainder of your day, going to be hiking back up and only into the low to mid 50s. Again, we'll have those chances for rain for much of your day and tracking out that rain for you. You can see stuff we've got bubble into the south continues to make its way in. And then we build more moisture in from the west, have a chance for a stray rumbler in there as well. But again, not expecting anything severe out there today as this area of rain continues to march its way out of the state. So clearing skies tonight. And then as we head into your day tomorrow, more sunshine on the way. Winds relatively light into the afternoon. Those are going to pick up again into the evening as we see another system start to inch its way into the state. That's going to bring in chances for showers and even thunderstorms overnight into your Friday morning. And you can see heavier rain, stronger winds. So do plan on around, I'd, I'd say, a, a quarter inch to a, a half an inch for many of us for rainfall totals out there today. And you can see as we start to work in some of that rainfall Thursday overnight into Friday, could be spots uh, over an inch and potentially even upwards of two inches. So as we work through the weekend here, chances for rain continue again Thursday into Friday. Have chances for stronger storms Friday and Saturday. Temperatures back into the middle 70s by Friday. Sounds good. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, we still have our eyes over at I-80 near Oakland Acres. So again, the road is completely blocked if you're heading westbound. Uh, and it's been going on for quite some time, about an hour. So this is a look right now as where the, you can't really see too much, but this is the where the light is flashing here. This is where they're uh, creating that detour for people to get around this area. So what you're going to want to do is head north to uh, Grinnell if you are heading that area. So just take a look right now. This is where the purple you see here. This is where the road is blocked. So you're going to want to take north, head to Grinnell, and you're going to want to take Highway 6 to get around this area. So again, this is all due to a vehicle that is on fire. It's causing a major uh, backup that we're seeing uh, near Oakland Acres. So we'll let you know once it opens back up, but we'll also keep uh, talking more about a detour you can take if you are heading this area for your morning commute. I will impact, impact anybody coming in from Iowa City into Des Moines. Major changes are coming to a Des Moines ballpark. The changes you will and won't see starting next season and why the changes must be made.
Some major changes are coming to Des Moines Principal Park, home of the Iowa Cubs. One of the most visible changes will be the change in scenery as the center field wall is going to be raised to block part of the view of the downtown skyline. New Major League Baseball rules mandate the batter's eye or where the hitter sees in center field while batting must be 36 feet high so they can actually see the ball coming at them. Right now it's only 16 feet high. Our bigger problem is, is all of the clutter behind the outfield wall the capital included, sunny day, a left-handed pitcher, left-handed batter, and the sun is shining, it's, they're blinded. Um, and so it's an adjustment that, that we really need to make. The Golden Dome is nice, but it's hard to bat into. Other improvements coming to the park, though, include renovations to locker rooms and more space for female staff members. The final changes have to be approved by Des Moines City Council. Those renovations would start this fall as soon as the season ends. It's now 526. Reports are on the rise. The alarming stats Iowa officials are seeing with child abuse. Plus, empowering cancer patients. The big boost to help a metro boutique give back to the community in a beautiful way. And the COVID-19 pandemic might be slowing down, but some hospitals in rural Iowa are struggling to staff its facilities. How one school is hoping to help. And we got chances for rain for much of the day today, and then storm chances roll in. I'll let you know when those will be coming into the state of Iowa.